Marvin from Brooklyn. Hey, Marvin, how you doing, man? I'm doing all right. Happy Rosh Hashanah. Oh, thank um, you. Happy Rosh Hashanah. I wanted. <laughs> uh, so, um, I kind of had a philosophical question I wanted to sort of shoot at you. Okay. Um, I had a. Uh, Nas yeah, is better. My Eastern European... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. So we had uh, some of our Eastern European uh, relatives come into town, and uh, uh, we got into this sort of debate about the idea of xenophobia versus uh, uh, racism. Mm-hmm. And I know it's a sort of a, a tangential debate that you can go on and on about, mm-hmm. but I seem to, I'm of the belief that Europeans, for some reason, don't view, or the, their racism is so embedded within a, na- a nationalistic purview mm-hmm. that if you were to really hold them accountable for really what their nationalistic views are, they, they really wouldn't hold water because I think they view people more on a racial level. But granted, I'm also second generation and I live in America and I understand the concept of racism probably a, a little, uh, you, know, through the, you know, through our own educational system. And so I'm trying to just pick your brain a bit and see uh, where your opinion would lie in this. I'm not totally sure what, the, I mean, I, my only, my only sense is, is that if I understand you correctly, I think in some, some European traditions as an example, so like in France, their colonialism, their imperialism had more to do with, and, and I, and I, you know, with all the usual caveats that one should make here, but but their their theirs had more to do with being French and the French way is the best way. Period, and we'll go and we can you know murder people and take their land and everything else. But conversely, we could teach them potentially to be French in a certain way, whereas maybe in mm-hmm. other systems it was much more just like you know you are or you aren't. And that's a race-based thing. Um, and I think, obviously, you know, in British colonialism, it kind of functioned differently. Like, maybe there was a little bit more room in India for, you know, training certain types of Indians. Um, I mean, obviously, in both cases, it's totally racist and it's totally prejudiced. But it seemed like some of the systems had more to do with a xenophobic cultural best way. And others of them had to do with just straight up racial skin tone difference now i don't know practically how much difference that makes when it really comes to you know either colonizing other places historically or today you know um having a problem with uh you know uh, helping syrian refugees Uh, but you know you see big differences right like in terms of obviously the german response is very different than the hungarian response and uh and you know the concerns are different yeah raise is like like a country like uh, Romania for example which mm-hmm. has like had you know it's probably been a uh, you know it's probably had a hundred years as a, as a country but has been taken over by so many regimes and on the flip side they are viewed uh, uh, almost synonymously with gypsies right. uh, almost to the extent that the word Roma and Romanian are, are, are thought to be the same thing. Right, right. And so if you were to talk to, say, to a Romanian person who goes to the, uh, the West, they take great umbrage to be considered a migrant in, term, in, in, in reflection to, say, someone who might be, in their own view, a, a gypsy. And so it's, it, I, I always find it very interesting to sort of see the semantic shell game that gets played uh, in uh, Europe when it comes to... Uh, what a uh, naturalistic pride comes uh, comes from. And I think you're very right about uh, the colonialism. I don't want to take too much of your time. But hey, I you appreciate so much. it. Fascinating question, and uh, call again soon. 